Welcome to the Frost Cave Portal Hub. Before we begin the tour, I wanted to show you what the location looked like as I began building. When I first discovered this place, I of course noticed the Frost Cave sticking out of the cliff face. The other thing that caught my eye was the large curved groove next to it, which seemed perfectly suited for a round tower. I knew I had to build something here, and since my haphazard array of portals was becoming increasingly inconvenient, the probability that I would build a portal hub here was pretty good. I marked the location on my map and moved on. While frost caves are part of the mountain biome, this patch of land outside the cave is part of the black forest biome below. When I first climbed up here, I was surprised to see there were two grey dwarfs laying claim to the land. Needless to say, I found it necessary to evict them both. <laughs> In the future, I may remove my crafting stations and see if I can recruit a few more to come back and work as perimeter guards. And why not? Haldor has found one agreeable enough to be his weapons and armor salesman. This has freed up Haldor so he can deal exclusively with his other fine goods. I think the Grey Dwarf ended up with the better job, to be honest. Everything I build in this world is created in survival mode. All the materials used are farmed and transported to the site as in normal gameplay. I do not give myself any items in game, and I do not fly to create the build. It's all scaffolding and crazy ladder placement. Climbing to the top of something only to realize I'm out of wood, stone, or iron. Precarious high wall walking, and more than one instance of falling off and dying to be sure. I do use some dev commands, but they are commands used for creating cinematic video footage. When working with the terrain rather than modifying it, you may encounter problems that require creative solutions. As a result, you will sometimes end up with a unique build feature or with something that looks like it was made to fit the space instead of forcing the space to fit the build. In my opinion, Valheim creations benefit from this type of organic building. The only terrain modifications I made were a handful of pick attacks in order to finish the flooring of the ground floor kitchen, and a few more to fit in my stone oven. I also removed part of a large rock that was taking up too much floor space near the door. As this rock was attached to the side of the frost cave, I only removed as much as I needed so as not to affect the appearance of the frost cave from the outside. Originally, I sealed this off with a wall, but later on I moved the door over and turned the chipped away rock into my hearth fireplace. I kind of like this line of broken rock in there. It somehow looks like it belongs. Other than using my hoe on the ground outside the tower to level and pave, there were no further modifications of the terrain. The tower size I originally plotted out was going to be too small. The circumference of the next size up was too big to fit the space in its entirety, but the scale was better suited to the existing frost cave and to the tower height that I wanted. By building half a tower wall in front, the natural groove became the second half. When designing the interior, I made a few attempts to cover the natural grooved wall but in the end, I left it revealed on all three floors. Wood walls fell out of place, and as usual, I preferred the organic look. As a result of all this, the interior isn't perfectly round. It has more of an eye shape. I see. There were many changes made during the build, and there were a few problems that I had to overcome. The portal hub floor and the tower were built separately without any common blocks. As a result, the tower wall pieces and the portal hub floor pieces were not on the exact same level. This created a problem when designing the stairway and landing which leads from the portal hub floor into the tower. So I had to come up with a way to rectify the situation. Here I used a wood floor as a step between the stone stair and the landing. And here, I used the top two steps of a wood stair to fix the height and distance discrepancy at the doorway. It did result in some asymmetry, with the stairs extending further to the right than they need to be, but the wall sconce helps to balance it, and the result is not at all terrible. It's a unique design arrived at only because I had to work with what I had. 
If you've enjoyed this video thus far, please consider liking and subscribing. And with that, let's begin the proper tour. The first floor contains the kitchen, which can be accessed by the front door or by using the staircase tower. With a stone oven, hanging brazier, and a hearth fireplace without a chimney, the kitchen needed to have a high ceiling to deal with all the smoke. There is a kitchen counter with cabinets below and an overhead shelf. The overhead shelf's main job is to help fill the space, but it's also a good place to keep a fermenter. The butcher's table and the pots and pans were incorporated into this custom piece. On either side I have used two shutters, which results in this X pattern when they are closed. This custom storage area features cargo boxes, which can be obtained by destroying a cart with items inside. The trophies on display hint at what's on the menu. I really enjoy the rustic look of this wood ladder stair, doorway, and small landing. It's another example of made-to-fit building. Originally, I had wanted a spiral staircase, but it didn't take me long to realize that a spiral stair would have taken up too much space. That's when I decided to add the staircase tower. Besides providing access to the second floor, the staircase tower added depth and balance to the overall appearance of the build. Let's head upstairs to the second floor. Besides being a bedroom, this floor serves a few other purposes, each of which I'll go over in due course. I thought it might be fun to do something creative with a dragon bed. I came up with this canopy design featuring a large shelved headboard. This small balcony imitates the design around the top of the tower. This square column was necessary for a feature found on the third floor. I paneled the four sides with signs and decorated it with shields and an abomination trophy. The stair tower worked well to gain access to the second floor, but it wasn't tall enough to reach the third floor. I tried for hours to come up with a way to add stairs from the bedroom to the upper floor, but everything seemed too imposing on the second floor and too limiting of the floor space on the third. Everything seemed to take away rather than add to the design. In the end, I decided to add a portal from the bedroom to the portal hub floor. The minor inconvenience of time spent in the portal was worth keeping the cohesion of each floor's layout. And if a portal hub can't have a portal elevator, what can? The third and final floor is the workshop. It houses everything needed for crafting and repairs. There is an artisan table and a spinning wheel, a level 5 workbench, and a level 7 forge. The storage space is limited, but it's more than adequate for my needs here. This reinforced chest storage unit is simple yet stylish. I can't say that I'm a fan of the appearance of the black metal chest, but it is useful when space is limited. And the cart? Eh, why not? This custom tool bench uses a chest placed in such a way that the ring on the front shows through when the shutters are closed. The centerpiece of the room is the obliterator. The inspiration for the indoor obliterator came from the center ring of the ceiling lattice. 
At first I thought I'd leave a hole in the roof and place a smelter here. Then I remembered that I'd been wanting an obliterator for quite some time. I decided to place a stone floor slightly above the wood floor as a base for the obliterator, but my floor wouldn't support the stone floor tile. This was the reason for the supporting column that you saw in the bedroom. It provided the stability needed for the stone floor tile. This base is very safe from attack. So far, the only enemies that have been able to reach me here are the bats. But they are more of a minor nuisance than any sort of serious threat. When I get the wolves event, they just stand on the cliff edge while I pick them off one by one. During skeleton surprise, the skeletons attack from the same location as the wolves, or they congregate down below. It all depends on which of the two biomes I'm in when the event is triggered. Nothing from the forest below can get up here. The only serious threat I've ever faced here was from a stone golem that was attracted to the wolves during the wolf event. He slid off the cliff and landed on the tower roof. Lucky for me, it was the spike arm variety of golem, which only has horizontal attacks. If it had been the boulder arm type of golem, which has downward attacks, it may very well have smashed its way from the top to the bottom of the tower. Because of this threat, I added a stone wall to the cliff above. And just as I was finishing up this part of the video, explaining how safe it is here, this happened. I had finished editing for the day, took the game off a pause, and a few minutes later the event began. Partway through, I remembered to start recording. Having become accustomed to the safety of this tower, I seldom worried about using food to keep my health points up. And while one or two drakes on the mountain don't do much damage, half a dozen or more can take its toll. This was the first and only time that I died here because of an enemy. They destroyed three portals, but they were easily rebuilt, and there was no other damage. That wraps up the tour. Thanks for visiting the Cliffside Frost Cave Portal Hub.